Oh. Oh, perfect. Okay. Good awesome. deal. Good deal. There we go. All righty. Welcome to the show. I'm just going to put the link of us inside the event now so people can click it. And there we go. Should be all good to go now. It's always interesting. However, let's start. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of the Higher State Show with me, Jana, also known as Healing Magic 27. And I have a guest, Roger Burnley, who is joining me today for the first episode. He's a friend and, yeah, very, very close companion, um, how, we, how, we send, <laughs> how we say, on a very beautiful level from the soul as well. And we will talk about the journey of self-healing. Roger is an intuitive life purpose coach. And yeah, he will tell you more about this, um, about his work, about his journey. And I'm also going to contribute with my journey. We will have a little bit of a conversation about the topic as self-healing is crucial in your human evolution. And we are all going through healing journeys Roger and I both healed uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, basically on all levels already. And um, we trust that you will gain some value and you can relate to things that we say. So, hey, Roger. All right. You, that was so wonderful what you just said. And then as you were saying, healing and physical, mental, emotional, all that, and the last was spiritual. And that's the last one. That's what we're all doing. And this is why um, I love how you named your podcast Higher States, because I'm always um, not amazed, but surprised at how you knew that, that we would be moving into higher states, or at least that's what would be occurring in our world um, right now. And that was a um, challenging one for me to talk about before. So I'm always grateful when I can do things like this, do a podcast. It's easier for me when I can ask, be asked questions and all of that, because otherwise I'm introverted. I don't want to be out there talking about it. So when I do an interview, it's always easier for me to break through the information. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, sir. Thanks for taking time and for well, doing what you do. Tell me why you call this higher states. Sure, higher states, because for me personally, I strive to become better than ever, right? I, I strive to become better daily. If I'm moving forward, if I'm taking new steps in life, this is most important for me. So I love to share information. I love to learn, right? So I'm here also learning from you in the show, and I'm learning from me through observation about myself and it's a daily learning, a constant learning in each and every moment, basically. And through the learning, I gain experience. And through the experience, I gain wisdom. And therefore, with the wisdom, I'm able to achieve higher states on a daily basis. So we as collective, right? Like, I try to get high, mm. basically, right? To start up with this. I try to get high through substances, through smoking, um, drinking, partying, taking drugs. This is how I tried um, in my teenager ages to get high and to achieve higher states because I wanted to feel good. I want to get all of those happy feelings in, though I didn't knew ways how to be happy differently. And the key aspect of all of this is just to be who I am and learning some tools as breath work, right, as one of them which is super effective to get you in an altered state of awareness very, very fast and easy. So as I say, I love to learn. I love to share. And how about you? I well, mean, uh, yeah, I like, love what you said about um, getting high. Um, 
because a lot of us have done that. A lot of us have moved through our lives. I did it when I was younger. I would do, I, I did um, acid when I was, because I was, came from a different age. So yeah, I did that occasionally. I did other things and it was always this place of what, why are we doing it? Why were we doing it? And it was to, to leave, to, to access some other state because the state that we were in was uncomfortable. The state that we were in, that we were experiencing, um, wasn't enough. And so we could use a substance or a drug or a distraction or anything else to try to reach that other state. The thing, the last thing that we come to figure out is, oh, you mean those states are just in my consciousness? They're in my mind and I can control those and I can do it in a different way. I can do it holistically. I can do it and all of that. And I can talk about this because even though I experienced all of that, this is why it's so good to have you because you're much more extroverted than I am. <laughs> so you can pull things out. Um, but even though I was moving through those different states throughout my life, it was still challenging for me to accept that that's what was happening. And this is what's going on for a lot of people right now. And why I had to bring my work forward because I knew people would be a little uncomfortable because it, they're feeling out of place now. <laughs> mm, they are. And we actually all feel, do feel uncomfortable at times. And I mean, to be aware of, of finding the balance, right? Finding our internal balance so we know when to be extroverted and when to be introverted. Because I do believe we are all do have both aspects of it. And when we're becoming one and whole and complete, um, or we already are, but the moment that we do accept that, um, what I found out, we are who we are in that state. I thought I'm introvert because in a big group of people that I don't know, I turn out to be more introvert first because I'm observing. I need to know where I'm at. I need to know who the people are, what they do. And then therefore, but the moment that I become comfortable in the surrounding and now I, I learn to heal, right? So th the more I heal, the more I went out there and presented myself and chose, made the decision um, to share my story. And the actions on daily basis are basically about now, what can I do to contribute to helping people achieving higher states if we keep it to the content right so let me ask you the question if, if you listen no, to me wait, now wait. you said something so fast i'm gonna i don't want to leave balance because we have to we have to acknowledge roger and i we are on a very similar state so i actually don't even need to ask many questions and it it won't be as an interview because roger and i we usually have back and forth conversations due to what the other one is saying. So go ahead. What you said about balance was so important. Nothing happens in our lives accidentally. We just decide to pay attention at certain times. That's all. And so I was listening to an, an, a video this morning, just just before doing this, from I, I, Pam Gregory. I'm I'm going to um, point her out. She's an astrologer, but she gives astrology in such a different way. It's so enlightening, and and mo a lot of people know that she, her channel is really growing. But anyway, she was just talking about that balance, and this is what we're all trying to achieve. Now, what I started bringing in in terms of this work is that yeah, we are all moving through this place where we have to find balance within ourselves because the world is attempting to find that balance. And when I started receiving the information about, oh, women would be much more important now because we needed a different balance. We needed more feminine energy in our world and within ourselves. We all have the same ingredients. We come into the world with these um, masculine and feminine energies. And when they get off balance, then we start to go, we're not being becoming our authentic selves. And then when the world gets off balance, as it has over centuries, then there's a correction that is needing, which is why my guide said we're moving through a restructuring to get back to balance within ourselves and achieve that balance within the world, because we're all creating the world, which is something that I just put out the other day. We are creating our lives and the world. We, we just are not aware always that we're doing that. Exactly. And the moment that I actually 
became aware of that has been a very uncomfortable moment, right? Mm -hmm. to, when, when I come to this, um, thanks for joining MJ. Thank you for being here, Sally and Ulukemi. Thank you so much for contributing and typing into the chat already. Awesome. Like the moment that I got run over by a car two years ago and a little longer, April um, two years ago, I I could see it. I could see that the the choices that I made led me into ending up in a hospital, right? Because I had difficulties to love myself and I chose to go along that path um, to, yeah, to experience, right? What is it to be alive? How is it to, to go partying? How is it to experience all of those things? Though in those moments, all I wanted is to be appreciated. I wanted to be a part of a group. I wanted to belong, right? And I looked for validation everywhere, but not within myself. So this really showed me in the moment that I had to take care of myself and I have to learn to be honest with who I am, right? And this is the connection that I have to my super conscious self. And this is accessible when I'm in my heart, right? Where the connection comes through. So you mentioned your guides as an example. So give the audience for maybe some people don't know what guides are. I mean, Roger is a spiritual channel. And um, if you check him out on YouTube, he will you will see what he is doing. And it's, it's kind of funny. So he might be able to um, show us something later or in the next time as well. But yeah. what do you think? How, how would you describe guides? What are guides? Um, it, it's your accident was a guide. And see, I'm going to let me let me take it back a different way, because a lot of people will move through. I did this and this is why I, I keep talking about it. We will have certain experiences and it feels to us like we're somehow being punished or we're somehow, um, you know, we, we've been guilty. And so we're being punished and we're having these experiences because of that. And I choose to think, no, that's not it. You're just moving in a direction that wasn't going to serve you. And so you're being pushed, you're being guided, you're being urged into this other direction. And the reason I say that I had, to, we're talking about accidents. I had a car accident. I knew that I was meant to move in a different direction. I've done that throughout my life, but I resist. <laughs> like a lot of us do, I resist and I go, no, I'm not going to listen. You know, we all have intuition. And when we listen and trust it, it's that feeling of knowing this is what we're to do next. I would, I would ignore that so much, I can't even tell you. And so I had this office and I was doing a different work then. And I was going to the office and making a turn. Um, and it seemed like I was making a left turn. And this was so and it was a rush hour and there was a lot of traffic, but people stopped to like, let me go through. And so they would say, no, just go because they were stopped in traffic. And I said, OK, great. And I make the turn. And as I make the turn, I see this one car speeding in the park in one lane, the parking lane coming right at me. And there's nothing I could do. I couldn't move. I couldn't go fast. I, there was nothing. It was just in that instant. And bam, my car was hit. I went flying across the street. And all the airbags came out. I thought, okay, I'm dying now. This is what's happening. And that was traumatic. And then I got, and when it was done, I thought, oh, you were resisting where you knew you were supposed to go. That's all. Now change. Still, it was it was challenging. And so the next part was becoming becoming that change. So I said, okay, I'm supposed to get rid of this office. I'm supposed to start doing all of these. That can happen. So it becomes our interpretation of the events and things that happen in our lives that give us the guidance that could help us live be better lives and move in the right direction, even when we resist. So that was one part of it. Um, my guides, that's what you want to tell. They, when I started doing this in 1988, I sat down to do, I, I started meditating a little bit before that, and, and but I heard about automatic writing. So I said, I'll try that. And so I sat down to, to do it several days. I just said, okay, I'm going to have a pen and paper and see if anything comes through. Because I just read about it. I didn't know. And so after a few days, something felt like it was coming through and it was really weird and crazy. And it frightened me. And I have to, I talk about that because a lot of people, when they awaken to hearing things within them, it can sometimes become frightening. But we all have guidance. Don't you? 
We don't always trust it. We don't always um, believe it. That's the main thing, but we always have it. And so um, I stayed with that and I kept every day, I would sit and I would write and I would receive information and it was changing my life, but it was still, I'm not gonna tell people I'm doing this. I'm not going to tell people it's happening because I also had this fear of judgment or what people are going to think and, and, and all of that. And it's the most insane thing because I'm doing something and receiving information that is helping me, but I don't want to tell others. A lot of us do that. I mean, when we get something and we move through something, we don't want to talk about it because it feels different and weird. We're supposed to be weird. We're supposed to be different. That's how we grow as individuals. So, and so when I when this first started happening, and I said, This is weird, I said, Who's speaking to me? That's exactly what happened. And then I said, Wilhelm, not knowing why I'm even saying that name, but I just knew that it, I couldn't own this. And that's that's really what happened because I, I I said who's speaking to me and I heard it's it's you it's a, another part of you it's your higher self but if that makes you uncomfortable call us whatever you like that's and I said Wilhelm didn't know why I said that name until decades later and I'm saying that because we all many of us will uncover things about who we are someone said in the we were watching the channeling session yesterday and someone put in the, one of the chats um, does your life purpose change. Yes, <laughs> it can always change because we always can are in the process of evolving and then we get new information. Oh, now I want to do this thing. This is the next part of my journey. This is the next part of my life. So yeah, that can happen. I like that you say the life purpose can change because depending on the state that we are in, depending on where we are at at this current state, we do have different things, right? Like me now being being where I'm at. With 18, I couldn't imagine me doing what I'm doing. Me launching a podcast, having a conversation with you. I, I wouldn't have thought this. Back then, my only thing is like, what the heck am I going to do in my life? And I didn't know the answer. I knew I wanted to talk somehow, but though I had like, I was frightened about being in public and sharing my voice because as you say it, right, we receive that information, but though we do lack on trusting ourselves in a way, right, that we are basically right. contracting and we're not keeping it um, or we're not spreading the message out there. I'm not sure that you understood the importance of the name of your show either. <laughs> I mean, tell just... me, tell me more about that. <laughs> you, you tell me now. Because that's for people to understand that we're always seeking higher states. Mm -hmm. That's what we're always doing. As long as we're in physical bodies, as long as we're alive, there it there's more that we can achieve because it's in our consciousness and it's a level of awareness it's a level of consciousness that we can always raise and so when we think about this and i try to explain it in, in ways that make sense if we look at our world for instance we can see that as um, civilizations we're very different than everything was a thousand years ago and so how did we get there because individuals came into the world, were born, developed higher states of awareness and consciousness, and then the world changed. And so that's what we're doing. Every single person who lives in any time that they're living is contributing in that same way by deciding that they are going to move into the higher states of who they are. And then our world does the same thing, which is a crazy, when I started receiving that information, I said, this is a crazy concept to try to explain to people. But when we understand that we're, we're meant to be happy, we're meant to like live lives where we are achieving something and, and, and abundant and we have what we want, it's within us. It's our higher state of consciousness but it is a process of moving there. And that's what we do throughout our lives. And I've had, <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of experience doing that, so. Tell us one. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, let me say something about that. There's, I'm, I'm just gonna go way far. <laughs> I'm gonna go way, way, way far. Um, wherever, whenever, and this is the information that I keep receiving when I do a channeling session, which is so fascinating because I never know what's going to come through. And it's always a surprise to me. Um, 
But if we can think of this concept, if people talk about one or the law of one or coming back to oneness, well, if we think of ourselves, why, what would make us individually any less than any other person? The only question we'd ever have to ask ourselves, what would, what would do that? It's just the way we think. It's, and then that thinking has been given to us over centuries and centuries. This is how the world evolved. But if we're alive and if we're in the world, that means that, oh, we can contribute. We can do something that's going to make a difference. And the benefit of that is that we get to become happy. We get to become who we're meant to be. All of those things. And then we create a different kind of world. So it's the way that we talk to ourselves, right? And through the conditioning that we do experience in the last mm -hmm. thousands of years, eventually, oh, God knows how long, right? The, the way that we talk about ourselves, the way that we judge other people, right? The way that we're treating ourselves and others is not really allowing ourselves to feel empowered as a collective. So... Hi, Sally. Addition. Thank you. Thank you for um, nothing makes us less, Sally, Sally said. And, and this is it, right? Nothing makes us less or more. We are all, right? We're all human beings. We all come here a certain way. We're all leaving a certain way. And this certain way is the same for every one of us, right? We are all born into this physical being, having this experience. And again, to you you name it like how how important is the name of the show actually because mm -hmm. again this is as well in this physical appearance i am seeking to become stronger to achieve a higher state right to be more even to feel even better tomorrow physically even speaking right the more healing i do the the lighter I become and the higher I feel without having to take something. Sometimes I don't even need to eat until 4 p.m. and then I'm hungry as well and I feel super great. You said the most important word also, conditioning. And, so, and conditioning is something that we all have. And sometimes it can be helpful and sometimes not so much, you know, and that conditioning comes from what we learn, most of it given to us when we're children, when, you know, when we're born and all of that. And then that conditioning becomes our way of thinking. It becomes our consciousness. And unless we decide to change it um, to, 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 to service, then we are not living the lives we want to have. And there's one thing that's so fascinating, and I keep we will keep remembering things like our parents said to us, or our mother, our father, whatever. Sometimes, and, sometimes we do even have their voices in our mm. heads. Oh yeah, this always. Is what, what I did come <laughs> become aware of lately a lot that I was listening to the mm. voice of a mentor that I was listening to a year ago, mm. right? And how many people are having voices that beat them up, but it's actually maybe even their parents who were beating them up when they were little and now they have those voices, but through not really being aware that this is happening, they think this is who they are. But if we find the stillness in there, then we're actually able to, to sit and to discern, okay, uh, mm, this is my mother. Mm, this is my friend that I had in the, in the grade five in school. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't always nice to me and I called them friend but those voices like how can we how can we silencing our mind and this is why I love doing what I'm doing and helping people diving deep and creating that silence because only when you are able to silence the noise within you then you mm -hmm. are able to listen to your higher self your guides and receive the information trusting your intuition and becoming more and more secure confident in what you know because i believe that you know your answer you know what you're supposed to do next but you're talking about something that most people a lot of people uh, don't move to because it's challenging you see because the challenge is we have to look at w w where our lives are and then question why is it there and then that exploration will have us examine 
and different beliefs that we have accepted that have come to us. And there's one in particular that I, and I, you know, it takes years sometimes to come to understand this, but there's one that my mother um, gave me, which was really wonderful. <laughs> and she would say, um, I have, I had an older brother. I have my three brothers actually, but I have an old a brother is two years older. And so when we were younger, we would be given some of the same toys and this, that, and the other. And then I had a younger brother who came in five years later. And so there would always be this thing that she would say to me, don't be so selfish. And what she was saying was like, you know, being willing to share with the others, giving them, let them play with the toys as well. Don't be so selfish. But as a kid, I interpreted that as meaning, oh, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to have anything. I'm supposed to give everything to everyone else. And guess what? I started living my life doing that and not having things for myself because it was more important for me to give everything to others so that I wouldn't be so selfish. Only to learn later in my life that the best thing that anyone could do is decide to become selfish. Because when we become selfish, that means we are honoring who we are. We are honoring what we're supposed to have. And then we can do so much more for others, which is how I see the world working, which is why I believe it is, is meant to work when we can um, allow ourselves to have more than we're giving more to others. Because again, we are all one, but it takes a while for us to get that. That's the place I was going before. This, this bigger picture is that what, the, what we are all doing no matter where we are, we're trying to get back to this understanding that we are all the same. <laughs> we are all the same kind of people on different individual journeys, but our journeys, our life experiences, our individual lives contribute to our world and they contribute by the way we decide to live our lives. How happy are we going to become? Which is again, something that I just heard Pam Gregory say. She was actually quoting Lee Harris, who was another person that I, I love a lot, who's a channeler. Um, talking about the most powerful energy of, of light and love. And so if we have that, it just kind of, it dissipates the darkness within us and also within the world. You know, you say so many key aspects and I really, really trust that people are listening and learning to, to implement when they don't already do it. Because this, the, the knowledge is, when we learn from our experiences, we are actually able to, to make progress always, right? To move on. But what people mostly do is they're looking for the answers everywhere, but not within themselves, right? We, we try to do things for other people because we think that we are not worth it to do it for ourselves, collectively speaking. And we all have to work on that. Right. And it's not that I don't have thoughts in my brain or in my in my mind that I don't like, but it's up to me. What am I doing with those thoughts? Am I acting on them or am I actually saying, OK, no, I don't. So for us to being being able to love and light, right, to be in that place, I made a video two days ago, three days ago about bliss. I talked about bliss and choosing to be in that bliss. Excuse me. It's a choice, right? We can choose to be there when we really claim it. But it's, it's again, it's the free will that we do all have. And some people change not to go there because therefore you have to be good. You have to do good, but not just trying to do good for others. At first, put yourself first. So if you take care of yourself first, right, with nurturing yourself, eating well, exercising, I don't know, doing good deeds to others, helping, opening a door for grandma who is going into the bakery, what, whatever it might be, right, picking up some rubbish when you walk along the street already helps as well. But those small things that help us to feel good within ourselves. and knowing what to do to feel good within ourselves is an essential key of doing this because I cannot ex I cannot expect change to happen if I'm actually not doing anything for that. And then sometimes it takes a while for us to hear ourselves. 
And I want everybody to understand that one because we will receive guidance. And this is our intuition. Everyone will know this one. And then people typically when they receive that guidance and don't act on it, then they'll always have these incidents later. If only I had listened to myself, if only I had done that. And so it's that trust that we have to develop in what we're hearing and then deciding to act on it. This is why a lot of people will not act because it's that belief that hasn't been developed. And it's a process that each person will go through, move through in their lives and, you know, at the right times. But anyway, I wrote two songs in 1987 that never made sense to me while I was writing them. I just uh, yeah, thought- Yeah, Roger, Roger has been a very, um, very successful vocal coach and, and his songs are awesome. So check him out as well. Thank Keep you. going. <laughs> so anyway, the first song that I wrote was called Listen to Your Heart. And this was 1987. And it was saying that that's our guidance. If you listen to your heart, you always know the right way. And I'm like, okay, where did that come from? Why did I write that? Even though I wasn't doing it, <laughs> but I, I wrote this song. And then there was another one that I wrote called Better Than Me. And then it was talking about there's no one that's better than another. No one's better than me. And then I'm always looking for something outside of myself instead of understanding that it was always within. I wrote those songs in 1987, and it took forever for me to even understand what they meant or to start to act on them and start to live them. And I'm saying this because a lot of people will judge themselves because they didn't do something at a certain time or they beat themselves up. And I'm thinking, okay, don't do that. <laughs> That's a waste of time. Just start now doing it, which is always the progression that we're each seeking. Why do you think are we judging ourselves so much? The conditioning, exactly the thing that you said in the beginning, it's the conditioning and conditioning is generational. It is not just happening now. We have, we have these, these, this DNA, individual DNA, it's connected to who we are, connected to source, connected to God, what, however we want to think of it. But that DNA is very unique and it's, it's our genetic code, so to speak. And so it will show up in our timeline in our individual lives when it when it's meant to it's up to us to decide to work to tear it to work with it and to start to get back to that place of oneness within ourselves you see because when we do that then the world follows suit the world will copy what we're doing if we're loving ourselves maybe it'll start changing as well that's that's my belief right i, I love listening to billy carson mm -hmm. the wealth of information that he has changed my life completely when i discovered him literally mm -hmm. like two years ago basically when i chose to change he just appeared on my on my social media his teachings are amazing but however what he said lately in his videos again and again and i see it happening because i do practice it as well like when you do vibrate very very high and you pass by people, you are able to uplift their energy through ex through just yourself vibrating on that high frequency. Other people feel you. Everyone has experienced this as well. Like you sit in a room and this man or this, yeah, this man comes in and everyone just feels like, whoa, right? I mean, generally, if, if we look at Oprah, right? And people sitting in Oprah's, um show and she comes on the stage and everyone is just like gets mm -hmm. this uplift and sometimes you have the opposite side as well someone who is just sick of being sick of being i like to say it's sick of being because mm -hmm. who are we how am are we being however you feel it also and people say like mm, i don't i don't know about that and everyone has experienced this before. And maybe even a family member. The family member comes in, you're like, oh, okay. It is what it is, right? Acceptance. But if you're able as individual to stay in, stand in your own energy and to unconditionally love, then you are able to affect the people around you. And this is what you mentioned as well, right? You making the choice to become better you making the choice to, okay, yeah, I look within and the things, I've done mistakes, which is important for us to acknowledge. We all do make mistakes, <laughs> right? And it's okay. And you've been forgiven. There's no such thing that you're never forgiven and you've been punished and tortured in hell until 
which God would create this reality, <laughs> which which God would create that reality, right? To to right. punish. You, you mentioned family members. I want to talk on that a little bit mm -hmm. because um, I don't want people to understand this because we're moving through an evolutionary change in our world. And so we have to understand our autonomy, meaning that each person was born to live their lives as their authentic self. It doesn't have anything to do with your family. I'm talking about your family of birth. It has nothing to do with it. And so this gets challenges, becomes challenging for people when we move through changes in the world because we're all affected energetically. Everything that's going on is energy, as you were mentioning, which is a science that we are only coming to understand. We started talking about quantum science as we come to understand, even though we were given things by the likes of Einstein and Tesla and all of that who understood how things were created and many other philosophers and scientists. However, we're coming to understand that now, but we're moving through a period where there's so much intense energy of, because of the way that planets, everything is moving, things that have never occurred in our world are happening. And so we're going to notice, I'm not believing the same thing as my brothers and sisters. I'm not believing the same thing as my friends that I've had for 20 or 30 years. That happens and that happened, that happened to me. And you have to be willing to understand that sometimes people come into your life to serve a purpose in terms of your development. And even your parents, sometimes you may not feel aligned with them at some point, and that's a challenging place to, to go. However, if you can love them, and I'll give a perfect example because I, I, I had a splitting apart in my family as well, which was never thought that was gonna come about. And I had to come to understand that. And my choice was, Okay, I have um, two relatives or who are just making going in completely different directions. I had to see and understand that, oh, I love both of you, and you're just going to have these differences, and that's okay. And then one wanted me to say, well, I hope you understand me. I go, no, I don't understand you, but I accept you. That's the place we have to go to, you see, because we're going to have different realities. We're going to have different ideologies. We're going to have all of that. And none, nobody knows which one is right. And this is the thing we have to come to. No one knows, but you do know how you feel. And if you can go into what feels great for you, what feels good, what feels loving for you, to yourself, then, then the universe is going to follow suit, give you what you need. And then we start creating a different world. It's so important. Like, I believe the, the whole conception about love is something that people really have to learn about. Because just because we, we talk about unconditional love doesn't mean that you have to like everyone. Because sometimes you do are, have different ideologies. Sometimes you do believe in different things. Um, or you just don't like certain traits, which is good because we learn through being different, right? We don't need to like everyone though we can love and accept everyone through the love of oneness that we're all created from the same source and why should i have hatred even mm -hmm. right for for something that has been created from the same source that i have been created for so conditioning con conditioning which is a, a, another big big aspect of it when I began, okay, let's go back. Let me tell you this entire thing. Cause I, I, when I first began receiving this information, which was insane for me because um, it, it, it was, it was uncomfortable at first because I said, oh, we got to change things. And it's going to be maybe a little, because we don't like change. And I had to think about that. And so when you think about it, one of my messages that came through said, you're going to be moving through this change. And so when you put a bunch of people together who don't like change, you're gonna have conflict because everybody's gonna to wanna to be right. Everybody's gonna to wanna to have their way and all of that. And my God said, none of you know, except there's only energy. But if you're feeling good, then you're probably going in the right direction in terms of your, um, your direction coming back to oneness. You see, coming back to our individual connection to all that is. I mean, I had to look and think, well, why was I, as a black person, why was I, was I enslaved hundreds of years ago? Why would that have happened? We had a different level of understanding of consciousness then. 
And this is why we were trying to get to a higher state of consciousness, which again is why your title is so great. We're always doing that. And everything that we do, we actually want to experience and we want to grow. Although we think like we, we see people laying on the couch and watching, um, I don't know, the same things all over again and eating their chocolate bars and popcorn and whatever. Also, although they think that this helps them in feeling good and right reaching higher state, it's the satisfaction that comes through those physical pleasures that we're all here to experience. Don't get me wrong, though there is more to experience than just the physical pleasure like sex, food and drink, right? Whatever it might be, having a hot sauna or a hot bath, Right. I mean, those things we can we have to see to use them for our advantage, I believe, right, to achieve higher states, to evolve, to grow, to expand, because we, we strive to expand. We love to grow, right? And if, if I'm moving backwards, what am I doing? If I don't learn out of my past, what am I doing? And I grew up eating crap. I was eating microwave food and because I haven't been educated on those things. I wasn't really eating veggies. I have been very picky with my diet. And if I look back, I was drinking energy drinks from the age of 16 to 18, 19, almost daily, sometimes a few a day. I had hard difficulties just from my the, the lifestyle that I was living and this is the thing with sugar that people do have that high and that low and that high and that low and they're never satisfied but they think because they're now having like this short-term pleasure right that they're happy but then actually five minutes later when the rush is over they sit there and like what am I doing now and they want more Right, so they sacrifice in this very moment something to have this short term pleasure, but for a long term suffering rather than actually now sitting with it. I'm like, why am I craving this right now? I'm actually not hungry, right? What can I do? Right, and then, therefore, with sitting with yourself, doing good things for you, nurturing yourself, I don't know, exercising, eating healthy right? Looking, although he, eating healthy is not too easy because we always, many people have to look for their budget and it's not, it's, it's easy to, to go into the road of eating negative or bad things or that are bad things that are harming for you and causing cancer and all of, of those things than to actually pay for the good stuff and eat a little less, but actually feeling great and energized. I'm going to talk about that a lot. You gave me so much stuff, so let me go into it. Um, um, you made choices because of how you were feeling. You made choices and you you came to an awareness because all the other things that you were doing before were not causing you to feel good in your body. And so that's why you made physical changes in terms of what you're eating and doing all of that. Um, but that's not going to work the same for everyone. And this is the thing that we each have to understand. So we will make those choices based on how good we want to feel. And that is always, like you said, free will. We always have the choice of whether or not to do that. And then the thing that we're going to have to get become comfortable with, and I just channeled, I wrote this just last week, our only difficulty is going to be judgment. Meaning, that we are going to have judgment of ourselves first. That's what we always do. That's why we can't love ourselves because we're doing all this self-judgment, which has probably been conditioned. It's stuff we've learned and all of that. So we're going to have that judgment. But then because everything is changing so quickly in our world and we're all affected by the energies, we're going to have judgment of others. <laughs> we're going to have, because they're not doing it right. They should be doing this. They should, and then we have to ask ourselves, well, how do you know? 
How do you know what's right for their path? How do you know what's right for their individual? How do you know what's right for the world? See, because we always need contrast to create the world. And we can go into sciences to understand how that happens. You know, We can't create something unless we're doing these experiments where we're putting things together and see what comes out. That's what we're all doing in the world, which is what's happening now. And we decide, oh, are we going to create a great world or are we going to create one that goes a little bit crazy? Actually, my guides have said, no, we're going to a great world. We're just going to decide how challenging we will make our journey. Man. Everyone listen to this, please. Like, how challenging are we choosing to make it? To bring ourselves back to the story that I said earlier, when I got run over by a car on the highway two years ago, and I made it challenging for me at this moment. Family on the other side of the planet, right? I got hit in Tasmania, Australia. Um, and like one, one friend that also I didn't really felt too supported by. So I really had to sit with myself and it was a challenging time. Though, what am I choosing to do, right? Uh, choice. Roger mentioned the word choice. What am I choosing to do with my life? Am I playing victim? And I say, oh, poor me. No one there for me that cares. I'm sitting here or laying here alone in the hospital, right? Lost a few tooth, bloody face. It looked like blown. However, or I say, or well, time to change. And I chose to change. Change is, right, people, people are afraid of it. Though I have to bring again Billy Carson into the game because his perspective, he also had a car accident. But his doctor said, like, usually people who have experienced a traumatic experience like that and we all humans usually go through some sort of trauma. This is just what we collectively experience. They have post-traumatic, um, what's, this, what's the name? PD, PTSD. Post-traumatic stress disorder. Stress yeah. disorder. But yeah. Billy, his doctor said to him, you have PDG, post-traumatic growth. Yeah. <laughs> and this and is the... Now. Yeah. This is the mindset that he is operating on. And this is the mindset that I choose to operate on as well, that everything that happens for me makes me stronger. There mm -hmm. is no such thing than going backwards, right? So I have to see the value in me being run over by a car because I wasn't taking care of myself. I didn't spoke my truth, right? Mm -hmm. I've made choices that are haven't been supporting my overall health on all levels so i had to change and i had to feel the the pain and i had to be in this place and i had to be alone but what i did is i walked out of the hospital after three days i didn't need help to change my clothes i learned to stand and to balance myself from the first day on and i didn't want it to say poor me because it didn't felt empowering I want to become stronger than ever before. And this is the vision that I follow. And this is where I'm standing right now. Let me um, talk about this a little bit because uh, sometimes we all come into the world to serve a purpose and our lives give us that purpose. We don't see it all the time. I didn't see mine at all. I resisted everything. I went through more physical illnesses and diseases and, and things that you can't even imagine and difficulties and pain and all of that. And I can look at it now and go back through my life and see, oh, I was just resisting becoming, I was resisting becoming who I was. I was resisting listening to that voice, I, all of it. I, when, in 1979, I was in New York. I was living in New York then. And yeah, I'm, a, I'm an old guy, so I've been around a long time, but I was living in New York. And I started to have these horrible headaches. I can't even explain to you how challenging this was. And it, and I, because I didn't understand what it was, except I couldn't, it was the kind of pain that you want to kill yourself. 
that's that's what went on. And this would go on for days. I would have to go and sit in a room, close the, I couldn't talk to people, I couldn't go places. And then they would come back at different times. Sometimes they would leave and not, not have them. Then they would come back years later. Sometimes they'd be gone for years. I went through this for decades, not understanding that what was happening this entire time. Um, and then the other wonderful thing is that the medical profession said, oh, you, these are cluster headaches and they can't be cured. I go, oh, wow. Okay, so I'm going to have to live with this the rest of my life. Is that what's going to happen? And then I discovered, no, that didn't have to happen because I, it was just me resisting what I was meant to do. And the moment I stepped into that, all the physical things started to heal. And this is something that a lot of people um, will hear me talk about this and get a little upset when they think, I haven't done that yet. Listen, I didn't do it for a long time either, but it is possible. And that's the thing I always want to give to folks. And so when I healed the cluster headaches and I did a, I did a video, I put it out, I talked about it a bit because people thought that's not possible. And I know that when you come into yourself, anything is possible because we have all the resources. It's just most times, depending on our individual journeys, we will um, resist those steps or resist listening to ourselves or all of that. And then we get what I call a nudge <laughs> to go in a different direction. So, and, and sometimes we don't even hear or see the value that's been offered because we are not there or we choose not to be there yet or we choose mm -hmm. unconsciously subconsciously to not listen to it and then Sometimes a year later okay. a year a year later we're like i get it now how many times have we experienced this or maybe sometimes you have a conversation today right or i met this awesome lady in a hostel in tasmania and i was listening there she saw spirits she saw my past she told me things about my childhood she helped me remember things and i'm like where is she getting that information from right right so but i was just sitting there and listening and everything that she said resonated with me and it was beyond the logical understanding mm -hmm. though there was so much information and she said to me don't worry just go to sleep and mm -hmm. go just go on with your life don't think about it don't overthink it just everything will fall into place and it did it, mm -hmm. it totally makes sense one step by a time everything started to make more and more sense and sometimes we just blindfolded because um, we we chose to go along that path for a little longer you said so many things here okay first of all you mentioned subconscious and so i want people to understand that yeah things can get lodged into our subconscious that prevent us from accessing this information, these limitations or whatever that has been within us. We can do it, but it is there. We have to um, first really acknowledge that. And that's why things are not, might not be moving forward in our lives. Not, and I, and I can talk about this because I didn't acknowledge it for the longest time, but then you start to, you start to, when you start to get it, then you start to feel better and it's a momentum that starts to build over time and then but it's but it has to be for each person depending on where they are but for everyone it's the same thing it has to be a constant willingness to take the next step there's one story that i talk about and i talked about what's going on in the world and i was given this kind of analogy many years ago in one of my meditations about birth <laughs> and um when we think about the process of birth, you know, for that nine months we're in the womb, we feel great. <laughs> Everything's fine. We're taken care of. We don't have to worry about anything. Then they take us out of that womb and then we come into the world and we start yelling and screaming because we're in a place we don't understand. We're in a new environment that is frightening because it's the unknown. Depending on how we will interpret that experience, we will maybe carry that feeling of stepping into something new as being terrifying. And we kicking and screaming is the message they gave me. Sometimes but then again, also what environment and what environment are you in or which environment? Because if you are, you come here, you're pure, you're pure, right? You come mm -hmm. right from the place of, of happiness, of bliss, of connectedness. Mm -hmm. 
And then depending on how your surrounding is wired or vibrating on is what you adapt as a child. So if your parents have negativity, if your mom is an example, Mm -hmm. um, wasn't appreciating you, having you in your, in her stomach and you do have had that as well. And if you're a program like this already coming, entering this planet, then you do have to um, find that out if they didn't told you. Um, then sometimes you have programs running and you act in ways because of the trauma that you have experienced even mm -hmm. before you came here. Or then you right rise this kid yelling oh just because of or, or you start listening to the opinions from other people and this is then how you create the identity around who you really are but who you really are is so much more than the identity that you created for yourself through the information that you received through the way that your parents talk to you the parents talk with each other with their grandparents, right? Their belief system and all those things, the food that you're exposed to. So all of those things, they do matter in the way that we grow up and not everyone is able to make the distinction between what is theirs and what is, right? What is the one, the external thing and what is actually happening within. But they always have a choice. And this is that free will again. And again, so but but like if, if you see how many people are accepting, you mentioned acceptance, mm -hmm. are accepting that they do have a choice. Because mm -hmm. I hear people complaining and I don't want to hear it. I <laughs> because for me, again, I see the choices that people have. Right, I can listen to it once, but then I can offer an advice, and someone wants to take the hand, right? Someone wants to make the step, or they're not. And complaining is not really supporting any one of us if we really want to learn and grow. There is um, a thing that we all have to come to when we talk about choice and free will. It is something that we all have. And that's the thing that will cause us to live the lives we want to have. And I've done a lot of personal development work. I've done so many different things over in my year. I mean, I started so long ago. And then at one point I was going to a counselor, a therapist or whatever. And we're, we're going through so many things. And she says, I think you have anger, repressed anger. I go, no, that's not even possible. I couldn't possibly have that. I was going through all of these things. And and she was a really wonderful person. And then I got to this place where I determined that, oh, I get it now. It's because of all this crap my parents told me, especially my father. See, because if he had demonstrated something different, I would have been a different person. My life would have been much better. And it, it's all his fault. And so I said, I've got to talk to him about this. So I went to his house and I said, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk. And I told him, all these things that were going on and it says because of all your things because if you had done this differently i could have been this and he's and he's just sitting there and he's just looking at me didn't say a word until the very end and he said you had it better than most mm -hmm. I, and I, hear, to think about I hear that. my my parents i'm just recalling I think both both of my parents one day said the sentence at least to me as well yeah mm. yeah so what that said is, oh, so I can choose to believe that he screwed me up and I'm doomed because of that and I have no choice. Or I can decide to change my mind and create something different. And he said, because he said to me, you had it better than most. You mean it's in my hands now? You mean it's I have to do this? Yeah, that's that's what came up. And, and even that was many, many years ago, but it still was a journey to accept that empowerment, to accept that self-empowerment. But that's what we all want is self-actualization, which is the journey that each individual is on, their individual self-actualization or process of self-actualization. And again, then if we look at, at the collective, we collectively... Um see the difficulty that many people you ask them who you are and they tell you the name and then but what is behind the name like many people don't know what it is 
who they are. I asked myself those questions as a child, so I've been always very curious and I received the answers along the way of who I am, what I want to do, right? What feels right for me? Like, what is empowering for me? Like, what, what do I like? And what don't, right? So, but if, if I can ask you, do you think Wilhelm has um, something to say about self-actualization? So everyone, Wilhelm is the, the collective that Roger is channeling and I'm interested in um, if there is something coming. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, well, there was a whole lot of stuff. Let me give me a second. Let me, I, I will do something. Okay. <clears throat> Every soul comes to the physical plane to expand and evolve, and it's their individual journey, and they are given a plan, and that plan is within them. And you can call it self-actualization because it is something that must be performed by the self. Now, you come in with these ties, these strings, all of these things that you had in other lifetimes. Many of you don't understand other lifetimes, but if you think of consciousness, you will start to get the picture a little more clearly, meaning you have always existed. Your consciousness has always been around. This is why you can bring in information that you don't have any awareness of or receiving in this lifetime, but you can do that. But it becomes you letting go of the barriers that exist in your thinking that I can't do this. It's not me. I couldn't do this. It couldn't be me. This is how your world continues to evolve. Every time an individual comes onto the physical plane, they make a contribution. And that contribution they make is energetic, meaning are they going to love themselves? Are they going to move through those previous restrictions and limitations that they accepted and that's the love, war word we love using because many of you think you're being punished and you're not. You've accepted certain roles that you're going to play in this particular time in your world, this time trajectory on your planet, because you wanted the planet to become better. And the only way you can accomplish that is when you become better yourself. And we use the word better because it's a subjective individual word, but you will know what it means to you because we want you to feel good. We want you to love yourself. And all you have to do is decide to take one step each day, moving through these other limitations that have been there. And they're not your fault because you accepted them because we had a conversation with some Someone the other day who felt like their entire life had been these horrible things that had happened. And we said, oh, well, congratulate yourself. Because what you did, you agreed before you came onto the physical plane to accept some really challenging things so you could move through them. And when you move through them, then the collective, your universe will have that. Your planet will accept that energy that you have brought in because of the decision that you made, and this is the one that many of you don't understand, the decision that you made to love yourself, to become happy, to become abundant in every single sense that word might mean to you. And it is self-actualization because no one can do it for you. But we wanted you to understand that because as you move through these next times in your world, you will see things come about that will give you a little pause for reflection, let's say. But just understand that all you're doing is coming into the next version of who you're meant to become. And this is why we loved coming on uh, the podcast that we were invited to, to speak about higher states, because that is what you each are trying to understand, but you just haven't understood fully that the higher state exists in your consciousness. And as more of you come to that understanding, you'll see a very different world. And that's what you're all here to create now. And we love you for your contribution. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it is it is awesome the way that it comes through, the way, how, how simple the information is that comes through through you when you do tune in and channel. I'll listen to it later. <laughs> yes, that was that was that was that was short. That was precise. That was easy. I and no um, <laughs> if if we take, I mean, I already know. Like, I mean, I'm I'm sometimes I'm so present. I forgot what you say. <laughs> I was I was just observing and feeling. And the moment you started channeling, my heart just connected in in a very beautiful way. So thank you for for that. And it's the self-acceptance, right? Again, the, the acceptance part, it is such a crucial thing of our evolution to become whole within mm -hmm. ourselves. And many people, they look everywhere around to look for things that to feel complete. Mm -hmm. I love bringing children more in as I have um, the example around here with two, two kids. 
and it's it's very interesting how it is my ball it is my toy and the moment my ball is not with me then um or with someone else and give me my ball and it, sometimes it's 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 not easy because they make it part of their identity and everything that i do associate with my mind is very difficult for me to let go of so if my ball is not there or my ball is broken then an identity is um challenged you, i just came up something just came to me about the, this is because you've been speaking about you know working with kids and all of that but something you're in this place where you are now this is going to be a perfect training here out because when more parents become begin to understand that their children are individual souls they're going to have individual life paths they're supposed to live they're going to bring in different information maybe even more than they have and when they can decide to nurture and love their individual experience then we don't end up creating kids that are you know, you know um, maladjusted let's say that have these other issues allowing them to find them themselves yeah. no one told me and that I am psychic. No one told me that I do have psychic abilities. And I look at the kids and they do all have that. They are so intuitive. They are so right. tuned in. And the way that they look me in the eyes, they do observe me and they see that I am observing them. Mm -hmm. He, an example, he's 10 ear problems. And he said to me, why do I have the feeling that you know why my ear is painful and i'm just looking at them i'm like oh that's so what good. do you think yeah right that's good we're it's, gonna find more kids you're and you're i'm so glad that you're seeing that because we're gonna there well I, I did the same thing with you how, how could you have awareness at your age <laughs> it took me forever and so we must understand that there'll be as as the world is evolving as we're moving through evolution yeah kids are going to come in with a different sense of awareness. This is why I always like talking about the idea of a child prodigy. We wonder how that could happen. It's just consciousness. And now they're coming in with highly developed consciousness on many. And um, that's which is what we need for our world to continue to evolve. So exactly. And they're all just seeing through it all. Yeah, and they're all here good. to experience it, right? So they're, they're kind of playing a little bit with their power um that they do have because they see oh wow i act like that and i can try it out a little bit here and like mm, no i don't like it oh this gives me a little bit more joy let's let's stay here but it's about to guide them in a way that they feel understood and listened to because for me as a child i couldn't really take the authorities serious because there was no authority there was no leadership that has been helpful rare i had a few teacher in school that i could listen to that i felt okay wow thank you right it was mostly in the last years but i had difficulties to take them for granted because i could see through i could see their trauma i could see i could listen to what they what they're having going on in their consciousness and then I couldn't really understand why they make choices the way they make choices. To bring it with my parents as an example, sometimes it is very difficult for was difficult for me to see um, how the feelings and the actions have been in misalignment, right? Because we do not talk, we do not trust in our inner voice. And therefore I thought because they don't talk about their feelings or they don't express their emotions i have to i can't do this too or i hold the space and i thought i have to heal everyone so if my mom my dad and my sister had an argument and i was in the middle and i'm i was never someone who argued with their parents really i was always quiet i tried to stand in the middle and to play the middleman to somehow negotiate and to make everyone feel good and i see the same same way with him right now that he is taking so much on from his environment because he's so empathetic that he is now that i will he doesn't doesn't know what is his own right 
what's his what are his emotions and feelings and what are the ones of others and this was something that i recently learned um in the last year even more in the last two or three years that i learned to discern what is mine and what is not and many people right they they speak about things that someone else has told them and it's the same principle that they're taking on information from someone else rather than to actually okay yes rather than logically trying to understand the information that comes in i place it right here right i feel how do i resonate with that type of knowledge and then i explain it in a way that is unique to myself connected to my own experiences and this is then the way how we can influence people in a way that they feel understood rather than actually just repeating one-to-one -one, like what someone else said same thing with a mentor right if i'm learning something and i say the same thing the way that someone else is saying people don't understand it because i don't resonate and i actually channel someone else before okay we're going I, we're about to end and so i'm going to give one last story and this this i was watching a uh, we have to um every experience that we have is perfect i just want people to get that and this is a really challenging concept for most of us to understand um but i was watching an interview with chris paul he's a basketball player here in the u.s and um he was releasing a book he wrote a book just about his story he's a great great you know player and so what he was talking about and somebody brought up this one teacher that he had back in school, a coach that didn't promote him, that didn't put him in, in, and he was right, and he wrote about it in the book. And so the interviewer was saying, wasn't that a painful thing? Wasn't that a horrible thing? He goes, no, he, it wasn't. See, now he had a different interpretation because he knows that the reason that the person did it because he didn't want to lavish this kind of false praise on him or advance him before he was ready all of us are moving and at the pace when we're ready and we just come to understand that those experiences that we had that may have been challenging or difficult or we thought were holding us back might have been actually pushing us forward and we just have to understand that one so this is awesome thank you so much and Anne is here as well hello Anne. thank you for contributing sylvia thank you for greetings from my hometown actually <laughs> so um beautiful beautiful um yeah thank you so much sir Right. this is wonderful thank you i, I if, loved it if there is if there's one one advice that you want to give people with on their journey mm -hmm. of self-actualization even right self-healing self-actualization those things that all come together what right. would that advice be i'll give the first one i'll give because i received this question because people say what's that self-love thing how do you get there how do you love yourself and the, and it is notice every time you're judging yourself and just stop doing that <laughs> that's it <laughs> then you get there eventually stop beating yourself up yes exactly we yeah. all we all working on that but it's the okay. moment that you become aware of it um it's it's all good so roger where can the people find you who will listen to the show my website rogerburnley.com and that yeah everything Easy. is there the channeling sessions are listed there um, um yeah you can register all that stuff is there Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I appreciate the time, right? I, it's always a pleasure. Great. And until next time, thanks everyone Absolutely. for watching. Appreciate you all.